Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, special video. Uh, before I get into the video, I want to make uh, one announcement. I'm going to be away from my computer for about a week or so, so I won't be uploading any videos uh, during that time. So I thought I would make this, uh, this video quickly so I could let you guys know that. Um, so what is this video about? It is, um, I'm about to start in on the uh, English opening in my Opening Basics series. And uh, while I was researching it, I came across an interesting game in the English uh, played by uh, Mikhail Botvinnik against uh, Vitaly uh, Sherbakov. Let's see if I can see. Yeah, Sher Sherbakov, rather. Vitaly Sherbakov. Um, it was played in 1955 in the USSR Championship. So a pretty interesting game, and it introduces a system known as the uh, Botvinnik system. So this, uh, you can think of this video as a little bit of an appetizer for my uh, opening basics uh, series of videos on the English. So here, let's take a look at how the game went down. Starts off with C4, the English opening, and uh, Sherbakov plays uh, <clears throat> knight, F, knight to um, F6 there, most flexible response, uh, lots of different ways to play this, and now knight C3. And you can see that uh, White's first two moves and this uh, flavor of the English have uh, started to uh, focus on these uh, light squares and the light square diagonal, and we'll see this theme continue. So uh, G6 is a way to play here. Other moves are uh, E6 or even E5 going into kind of a reverse Sicilian, but uh, G6 is a top choice. <clears throat> and now G3. So we're getting into... Um, this kind of system where uh, the bishop is controlling this uh, diagonal and the uh, pawn and the uh, knight are also helping to coordinate. So so white really has a lot of uh, light square control at this point. Black is ignoring it for the moment. He's uh, castling and just preparing for his uh, counter-strike. And now um, we are playing a very characteristic move in the Botvinnik system and a move that uh, maybe is surprising at first because I just talked about what a good uh, diagonal this is, and yet the next move, e4, blocks that diagonal. And you may wonder what the heck this is about. You've left this uh, bishop staring at a pawn, <clears throat> and uh, you've taken away any influence you have further down the diagonal. Um, but this is the setup that Botvinnik played, and he played it in a lot of different um, openings, not just in the English, and he played it with both the uh, black and the white pieces. So it's a kind of system that you should probably become familiar with. Let's go forward a few places, but that's one characteristic is uh, pawns on both e5 and c5, e4 and c4 clamping down on d5. Um, so let's let's play on a few moves. Uh, d6 was played here, So and now knight g2. So look at the characteristic placement of the pieces too. The, the knights are placed out of the way of the bishop, this knight coordinating with the uh, exerting influence over the uh, d5 square along with the bishop, and this knight out of the way, not blocking the bishop, so developed to the uh, e2 square. And now e5 and castles, knight bd7, and d3. And now this is the complete setup. This is known as the uh, Botvinnik triangle. And uh, like I said, you can get this setup from other openings besides the English, and Botvinnik liked to play it in a lot of different situations. And now maybe the idea is a little more clear. Um, uh, White is just trying to close up the center so that he's free to attack on the sides. Now if we look at Black's, if we back up and look at Black's last two moves, he played the pawn to e5 and the knight to d7. It's also possible to play with the pawn to c5. And um, Either of those is, is popular and, and equally good. Um, but the knight probably does not belong on d7. The knight probably belongs on c6, so it can exert influence on this hole. There's a hole in white structure. If we uh, fast forward a couple moves, e5, castles, knight d7, and now d3. There's this permanent hole in, in white structure, and uh, makes sense for, uh, for black to try and drop a piece there. So this move, knight Knight to d7 is not the most accurate move in this position. Okay, uh, the game continued. Knight c5. Um, hitting out at some of these squares. That was the idea with knight d7 to get to c5. And then maybe he's going to play c6 later to try and uh, control this uh, d5 square. But uh, Botvinnik is not uh, eager to place pieces in the center. What he's trying to do is uh, break. Um, <clears throat> now, 
If we back up, one more thing about the Botvinnik structure is there's always two break ideas in the structure. You can either break with the f-pawn when there's a pawn here to attack, or you can break with the b-pawn when there's a pawn on the c5. So there's two different ways that you can break open things. Sometimes you play them both. <laughs> Sometimes you decide to focus on the queen side. In this case, uh, because of the way that black is played, Botvinnik decides to focus on the king side, so he kicks out with um, f4. And now c6 is played, so, so taking control of this uh, d5 square makes sense. h3, knight e6, okay, um, yeah, knight e6. Uh, I'm not sure where he's going with that knight. Maybe he wants to uh, prepare an exchange on the um, f4 square, but uh, white just pushes on with f5. And now uh, black is a little bit reluctant to exchange here. Um, <clears throat> probably would open up some files on his king and he's feeling a bit insecure. Notice that uh, white hasn't bothered to develop his queenside bishop. He's got these three pieces out, two knights and the light squared bishop, and now he's just pushing with the pawns um, and he's waiting to bring this piece out at an appropriate time. So uh, black continues with uh, <clears throat> knight to d4. So he did manage, this knight took kind of a circuitous route. It went here to here to here to here. So if it had gone directly from uh, c6 to there, he could have saved a couple of moves. But he did eventually sink a knight into the uh, d4 square. But uh, now white just continues with g4 and builds up this uh, pawn wedge focused on the black king there. Knight to e8, uh, preparing the move f6 so he can uh, try and stop the onrushing pawns. Bishop to e3, just uh, putting a little pressure on this knight, maybe threatening... Doesn't, no, it doesn't threaten to win anything because this knight has the bishop behind it, so he's not threatening to win a pawn, but uh, just uh, just keeping an eye on things. a6, queen d2, getting behind this bishop and preparing perhaps to exchange out the uh, dark squared bishop in front of the king. Now b5, so black is kind of uh, counterattacking on the queen side while uh, white launches this king side attack. Bishop to g5. Ah, so the bishop wasn't going to h6, but to g5, trying to force the queen away to a worse square. But this provokes um, an exchange. The bishop goes to f6, and then he takes. Knight takes. And now uh, knight takes d4. Botvinnik decides now is the time to get rid of this knight. If we back up a second, um, the chess engine thinks uh, black has been doing pretty good up to this point, but it thinks uh, black should probably take on e2 at this point, which it can do uh, because that's taking with check, and then re uh, grabbing the bishop. And that's a way for black to stay in the game. After these few moves, bishop takes, knight takes, and then now knight takes d4. Gets a little bit tricky for uh, black. This, this, uh, this pawn is weak, and we have these uh, advancing pawns uh, looking kind of ominous on the king side. So knight to uh, <clears throat> ah, it's white's turn. Knight to e2, putting more pressure on the d-pawn. Queen to b6, defending it and uh, putting it on this uh, diagonal, which may open up right, optimistically. But uh, actually, uh, queen to h6 is a real strong move here. So this queen b6 move was not, was not well-timed. It's uh, taking the queen away from where it's uh, needed. So really... Uh, Queen to h6 is the move that should be played in response to this, but Botvinnik continues with his plan. He exchanges here. C takes b5, getting rid of the pressure on the queen side and just trying to... His idea is just to keep the center closed with this pawn wedge and uh, advance on the king side. And now he plays queen to h6. So this is also a very, a very good move and good time for queen to h6. So bishop to d7. Um, what's funny is the material is even. And already the uh, the chess engine is signaling that uh, black has, I mean white, white has a winning advantage here, even before the move bishop to d7. Um, but bishop to d7 didn't help. <clears throat> so the game is going to be over shortly, just pushing on with g5. The knight has uh, no particularly good square to go to. It goes to h5, which was the uh, choice of the engine. And now I was thinking, well, is he going to clamp down with the... Uh, uh, with the f6 move, but, uh, you know, the knight is guarding the checkmate on g7, so uh, instead of pushing the pawn, he just brings his knight in, knight to f4, and black plays the move knight to g7, 
and now f6 is played and uh, black resigns <laughs> this is uh, most moves uh, result in a mate in two for example uh, knight to e6 then uh, knight takes e6 f takes e6 and uh, checkmate <laughs> so there's no defense there um, the only the only move here that doesn't lose immediately f6 um, after f6 the only move that doesn't lose immediately is knight to e8 and then um, there is a uh, a move here that uh, well, there's, there's several moves that win I was thinking knight e6 could be played you know you just need to distract this knight um, the chess engine is saying uh, knight e2 is the strongest move here let's check this out knight e2 queen to a5 and rook to f4 yeah, that's the idea you just get the knight out of the way bring the rook up and over and there's no way to stop this at check the uh, the pawns white's pawns over here are controlling so much uh, space that there's no way that uh, black can organize the defense the engine is recommending coming around this way queen to d2 rook to h4 and now uh, knight takes f6, just starting to sacrifice material. Um, it also defends, so um, let's see, what happens if you just take? Is there a trick here? Ah, oh, the, the trick, that was the idea with queen d2. It's pinning the pawn, so if we back up, um, the engine is recommending playing knight to f4 here is the way to, uh, <clears throat> the way to finish it out. Now queen takes f4, the queen has to stay on this line to stop the pawn from going, and so... Uh, the queen gave herself up, and uh, and now the knight moves. At least there's no uh, mate in this situation, but you see there's a overwhelming uh, material advantage. Uh, White's just going to uh, take this knight off with this rook, and then he'll have a queen, a rook, and a bishop against two rooks and a bishop, and uh, it's an easy win from that point. So anyway, after this move uh, in this situation, after f6, uh, Vitaly Sherbakov resigned. So pretty nice example of uh, how to play a kingside attack, kind of a positional a crush where you just gain space and gain space to the point where your opponent can't even defend himself against your attack. And um, if we back up, it's starting from uh, this position here. Let's go forward a couple moves. Right here, yeah, this is the uh, Botvinnik setup. So that's the idea I wanted to introduce in this video as well as to let you know I was going to be away for a, uh, a week or so. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one, and uh, you know, hope, enjoy, uh, check out the, the remaining videos on the, the uh, website, on this uh, YouTube channel, I should say. <laughs> Go back and check out any of the videos you may have missed, and uh, I will see you when I get back. Bye.